you're here. Merry Christmas. Well, we have, I know, right? We have four quick announcements. Say number one. Number one. We will be taking communion near the end of the service. The trays are a little heavy, so we always advise that the grown-ups hold the trays. When you're done with the cups, if you'll put them in the little pew holders in front, this is the only chance we get to use those. So we want to make a carpenter somewhere very happy and put those in those spots. Also, if you need a gluten-free option, let an usher know. We have a gluten-free tray down here at the front and one in the back. They've got the green cloth and the green ribbons, green for gluten-free. See how this works? Say number two. Number two. Our Spring Academy for kindergarten to fifth grade starts in February. The first day you can sign up is January 14th, and kids who are here in Sunday school that Sunday will get a two and a half hour head start on those who are still at the beach trying to log in on their phone. So remember that. And grown up, something very exciting. That's also the first day that you get to sign up to be a teacher. Ah, all right, okay. Ooh, we can hope. Dear Santa. All right, so number three. So tonight we celebrate the birth of a very special baby. This church loves to celebrate babies. On February 11th, we are having Baby Celebration Sunday right here. If you had a baby that was born in the last year, if you are a baby who was born in the last year, and you hearing this, good for you, you're very smart for your age, bring your grown-ups with you on February 11th so we can all look at you and see how precious you are because we love celebrating the babies. And say number four. Number four. It is time for the sixth annual Mr. Mark and Dr. Mythe Candlelight Fire Safety Extravaganza. So here's the deal. When it's time to light the candles, you always hold a lit candle vertically and the unlit candle comes in horizontally. Here's what we're going to do. Dr. Mike's going to try it. And if he does it wrong, we're all going to go, eh, try that. Oh, that's harsh. It is. It is. And if he gets it right, go ding, ding, ding. ding, ding, ding. Let's see if he gets it right on the first try. First try. Uh, I've got two words. Uh, Javelin throw. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again, Dr. Oh, Mike. Take another How chance. about, I know, you light your candle and then you throw it in the air as high as you can. Oh. Uh, eh, that was a double ant. Eh. Not recommended. Yeah. Not recommended. Yeah. All right, let's try it one more time. Ready? All right. This? All right. Perhaps. All right. Here we go. Oh, go. He's holding it vertically. He's, not, he's tempted, but he's still holding it vertically. And in comes the horizontal candle. <laughs> Ta-da! Ding, 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 ding. So that is how we do the fire That's safety. The when it's time way. to light the candles, always hold your lit candle vertically. Got it? All right. Let us all stand. Come, let us adore him.
seated. I invite the ushers to come forward for this evening's offering. But not the kids. You've got to stand up because you're singing the offertory.
if you are the parent of one of these children, if you will stand so they can come find you. Didn't they do a great job? Merry Christmas, kids. Still looking. We find him. Ushers, no one gets by, past you. There we go. Very good. Okay, well, for our opening prayer, there is a response that you say, the wonders of your love. Let's all say that together. And kids and grown-ups, if you want to do the prayer with your bodies, Reverend Nancy is going to show the motions as we do the prayer together. Here we go. Our eyes are ready to see the wonders of your love. Our ears are ready to hear the wonders of your love. Our hands are ready to share the wonders of your love. Our hearts are ready to feel the wonders of your love. Our hearts are ready for Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing the first Noel. You may be seated. Oh, it's getting late. They should have been back by now. No, goat. For the last time, I don't need you to do anything except stay out of the kitchen. Where is everybody? How can we have the perfect Christmas if we can't even keep to a simple schedule? Hey, duck, we're here. You're late. Did you get lost? Nah, sheep never get lost. Yep, we just wander off every once in a while to keep the shepherds on their toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what. Oh, duck. We did just what you told us to do. Yep, we worked up a great Christmas carol. You're gonna love this. Ready? And the one, and the two. 
It's not hark how the sheep, it's hark how the bells. There's already lots of carols about bells. Yeah, why can't the sheep have a nice carol for once? Because then it wouldn't be the perfect Christmas. Carols have to be just right. Got it? Got it. Sheesh, everyone's a critic these days. Come on, sheep. Let's go work on a just right Christmas carol. Uh, hey, guys, I think I have an idea for what we can sing. Yeah, yeah, Lamb, that's nice. Okay, Duck, take a deep breath. <sighs> it's all going to be fine. Donkey and Cow will come through with their part. Uh, sorry I'm late. Uh, I wanted to make sure to get the perfect Christmas tree, just like you wanted. Where's the rest of it? This is it, Duck. But don't you like it? It's too small, Donkey. Yeah, oh, sorry. Well, oh, maybe it'll look better once it's decorated. Ooh, did somebody say decorated? I just finished the star. Ta-da! Cow, that star is way too big. Too big? Hmm. Well, perhaps you're standing too close. I find that things often get smaller the further away they are. <laughs> Oh, just put it on the tree. Oh, okay. Oh, so much for the perfect Christmas. Hey, Duck, how does this look? Higher. Hey, Duck, how does this look? Uh, no, I mean put the star higher on the tree at the top. Oh, okay. I'll try. Cal, uh, I'm not sure that tree is strong enough for you to climb. Hey, let me go get a ladder. No, 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 don't worry, Donkey. We cows are very light on our feet. You know, I had an aunt once who jumped over the moon and moo! Cow, are you all right? I'm fine. Something cushioned my fall. A cushioned? Do you mean the Christmas tree? So how do you feel about two smaller trees? Okay, duck. We think you're really gonna like this one. Yep, it's an old-timey classic. Here we go. And the one, and the two. Deck the halls with cows and holly. <laughs> Tis the season to be jolly. Stop, stop. It's not cows and holly. It's boughs of holly. What are boughs? They're like branches, as in branches of holly. Oh. oh. Yep, that makes a lot more sense. Hey, guys, what if we try the carol I thought of? Yeah, yeah, Liam, later. Oh, nothing is going right. Donkey, please tell me you baked the pies. Yeah, of course. I popped them in the oven right before I went to get the tree. Good. That's good. Then according to the schedule, it should be just about time to take them out of the oven to cool. You already got that covered. Got it covered. Well, uh, just as I was leaving the kitchen, I saw a goat. Well, he didn't have anything to do, so I asked him to keep an eye on the pies for me. Donkey, you let goat into the kitchen? But he'll... Hurry, get down there before it's too late. Hi, goat. A duck wanted me to come down and check on you. Well, he seems to think you might, uh... Uh, goat? Where are the pies? <coughs> well? It seems Goat ate the pies. And the pie pans. And the tablecloth. But he says he's sorry. <coughs> That's it. I can't take it anymore. I've tried so hard to make the perfect Christmas, but everything's gone wrong. Hey, guys, what's all the commotion about? No, oh, Duck is upset because things aren't going as he planned. It's deeper than that. Things aren't going as he planned. Uh, no, I mean, 
The Perfect Christmas is about more than that for me. I thought if I could make the perfect Christmas, then everyone would really like me. Oh, come on. Whoa, oh, what are you talking about? Duck, you're our friend. Yep, you can be wound up pretty tight sometimes, but you're very organized. You keep us all on schedule. Duck, what is it really? Well, it's just all of you are part of the real Christmas story. Everyone knows about the donkey and the cow and the sheep, but no one ever said, hey, you know what would make this nativity scene perfect? One well-placed duck. <laughs> Christmas? There wasn't any room for that sweet family in Bethlehem. When the baby was born, the only place they could put him in was a manger. It was dark. It was cold. It wasn't perfect. But he was perfect, so we don't have to be. Well, then what are we supposed to do? The best we can. What if my best isn't good enough? Oh, Doc, I think your best will always be good enough. I'll, I'll try. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear creatures with peace from above and help them to Perfect. There were so many neat animals in that, weren't there? That was so much fun. There were so many. Who was the animal? that wanted everything to be perfect. Who was that? You're right, it was the duck. The duck wanted everything to be perfect. And do you think it's easy or hard for things to be perfect at Christmas? I think so too. I know that sometimes your parents and your grandparents, they know that it's hard to make Christmas perfect. Was the Christmas tree perfect? No. Was the star perfect? No. Do you remember the lamb? You no, know, the lamb, didn't the lamb tell the duck that he didn't have to be perfect to be everyone's friend? Wasn't that nice? And the lamb sang a song. The lamb sang a song about the thing that's perfect at Christmas. Actually, the person who's perfect. Do you remember who that was? Yes, it was Jesus, the baby Jesus. That's what's perfect at Christmas. And so because of that, I remember four words. The best we can. Say those with me. The best we can. How about one more time? The best we can. That's what we can do at Christmas, and we will be so very happy. And Dr. B, I have a feeling that everyone would be very happy for you to lead us in communion.
the adult table. This is, this is the Lord's table, and all are invited. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for this evening, for this time together when we share in the celebration of Jesus' birth. And we remember all that he has done for us. We remember your love for us in him and how you came uh, to be with us in this very special way in Jesus. And so as we receive these elements of the bread and the cup, may we receive anew the Christ child into the center of our living. And together we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now will those who are serving please come forward. When we break the bread, we receive the bread together. It's a means of sharing in the body of Christ. And when we give thanks over the cup, it is a means of sharing in the blood of Christ. And boys and girls and everyone, I want to remind you that in between the scripture readings, we're going to be hearing some beautiful Christmas carols. And I think it would be really neat if all of us would hum together the first verse of each one of these carols. In those days, the emperor made a decree that everyone in the empire should be counted. This meant that everyone had to go to their hometowns to register. Joseph had to go to his hometown, the city of David, called Bethlehem. Joseph was engaged to Mary, who was expecting a baby. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, they found that there was no room for them in the inn. Mary and Joseph had to stay in a stable, and this is where the baby was born. Mary wrapped the baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger.
Meanwhile, there were shepherds in the nearby fields, keeping watch over their sheep by night. An angel appeared to them and said, Be not afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there were even more angels, all praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to those on earth. When the angels left, the shepherds said, the Lord has seen fit to share this news with us. Let us go to Bethlehem to see what has taken place. So the shepherds hurried all the way to Bethlehem. There they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby. When the shepherds saw this, they told all about what the angel had said about the child. Everyone who heard was amazed, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. After a time, there came wise men from the east. The wise men were following a star in search of a savior that the prophets had predicted. When the wise men saw that the star had stopped, they were overcome with joy. When they saw the child there with Mary, the wise men knelt. And there they laid before him gifts of frankincense, myrrh, and gold.
All those years ago, a savior was born, a child so small that the hopes and fears of all the years could be held in a mother's arms. All those years ago, there was no room for this child. The savior of the world, the king of kings, was born in a stable. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we make room for you. We make room for you in our lives. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we make room for you in our hearts. Would you please look at your bulletin so that we can join together in the prayer after receiving. Gracious God, your son gave us a special meal as a way to remember your love for us. On a night like tonight, how could we possibly forget your love? Help us keep Christmas in our hearts tonight, tomorrow, and always that others may see your love in us, a love that is unforgettable. Amen. It happened 199 years ago in the village of Oberndorf, Austria, at the church of St. Nicholas. They were planning the perfect Christmas service. Christmas Eve at the church was to be perfect. The pastor, Reverend Moore, and and his music director were planning the perfect music, the perfect liturgy, the perfect readings. Everything would be perfect. And then something happened. And it happened in such a way that they didn't have time to fix it. And it seemed to be a disaster. The organ in the church broke. There wasn't time to repair it. I think I'm going to stay up here at this time. But the pastor had an idea, and he pulled out a poem that he had written, and he gave it to his music director, and he set it to music. And he wrote it so that it would be performed on guitar, which would not be unusual today, but was kind of unusual in that day. And so that Christmas that seemed to be just ruined because it didn't go as they had planned ended up being in fact, quite perfect because it gave us a beautiful song. Susan and I are going to sing the first verse through, and then you will join as we sing the first verse together again.
behold the first light of Christmas. He is born and He is perfect. So we don't have to be. It's enough for us to do the best we can. And that's good enough for God. Because one night, God did the very best God could. And it changed the world. Go. Be the light. Merry Christmas.